Hello and welcome back to SnowRunner and on Thursday they released a new DLC which includes this big thing here. This is the Zix 612H Mastodon and it is a returning vehicle to the series. It was in Mudrunner and Spin Tires and now it is here and let's just say it's pretty good. So we'll start off looking at some customizations that we can get. Its default engine um, is not bad, however there are better engines so I have put in the biggest engine. It is insanely powerful as far as I know. It is the second most powerful engine in the game in terms of torque. The gearbox, it gets at least standard heavy truck gearboxes. The standard special gearbox is terrible, it has three gears and not a great top speed. Now in case you're wondering about the fuel consumption from the massive engine and the advanced special gearbox, don't worry, this thing gets 500 litres, which is by far the biggest in the game. In terms of tyres, you don't have many options. You have some all-terrain tyres and some off-road tyres if you want to use those. However, it gets all of the standard MSH and DMSH. It also gets its own special ZHM tyres. And these are the ones you want because they have a mud grip value of 3.35, which is the third highest of any vehicle in the entire game. The uh, best being the Tataran, which has a value of 8, which is just insane. And the second best being the Cat 770G, that's the little one from Yukon, which has 3.5. But these are 3.35, which is very good, especially considering that all the DMHS and the MHS2 have a value of 2.4 and this is almost one higher than that. It gets a spare wheel, you can take the spare wheel off, you can leave it on, it doesn't matter because it doesn't put anything else in that space so it doesn't affect anything, you might as well just leave it on, it comes with it. The snorkels you have two options, you have the front facing and the flat cap, I'm not sure whether the game actually recognises the difference between them but this one looks slightly higher, so I put this one on it. In terms of frame add-ons, there are some interesting things. We have the Russian Heavy Crane, that's standard log loader crane, flatbed, van body add-on, sawing frame, so it's just quite great to module, sideboard bed, fuel tank, that's all fairly standard. Then it gets a loading crane, it gets uh, both saddle low and saddle high, and then it gets this unique long sideboard bed. and sort of a half sideboard bed because at the back it's not a full sideboard. Probably won't actually make much of a difference, there is still a lip so things aren't going to fall off. It also gets this fire tank which is another unique one and it has 2500 litres of fuel which is bigger than the water tanks on other vehicles. It's such a shame that I've done all the water missions before they've released this vehicle. However, what this thing does also have, which you can't see by looking at it, which is very interesting, is if you put the crane on it and you have like a saddle that just goes over there, long sideboard bed it's obviously incompatible with, however if you put a normal sideboard bed on it, the crane goes behind it. I have never seen any vehicle in SnowRunner do this. This also works with the flatbed and I think this will be very useful because the crane is at the back so if you have things lying around on the floor behind it, you can easily pick them up, and you can raise the crane up and then stack things, then they're less likely to fall off because you've got something holding them from behind. I don't know how much of a difference it'll actually make, but it's unique and that's cool. The not particularly cool thing is the fact that it only gets a short logging frame. Now, there, there is a medium logging frame and there is the long log carrier front, and it does not get either of those, and I don't know why, because the only other vehicles that get a short but not a medium are things like the uh, Step 310E, the tiny little trucks that just fit this and a medium one would be hanging off, but this one gets a giant three slot bed, so I don't know why it can't fit a medium logging frame, and it gets both the high and low saddle, so why can't it carry the long logs? Because most of the time the long log carrier is just in the same place as the saddle high, so I don't know why it only gets short logging frame. It doesn't really make much sense. However, this thing does make up for that in the fact that it can do just about everything else. In terms of visuals, 
you can stick some sun visors on it. Uh, you can then put on this giant metal cage. What this giant metal cage allows you to do is put on another spare wheel at the back there. You might as well have that. These things aren't exactly expensive. It also gets some trunk repair supplies, which is definitely not in the trunk, it's some roof repair supplies, which give you 150 repair parts and 140 fuel tank or front bumpers. There is this stock one, then there is this one which does have a couple of extra lights, but it also makes the front lower and it's already got quite a bit of front overhang, so you probably don't want to have more of that. This one, again, just more stuff on the front to hit, so I'm going to stick with the stock. Miscellaneous is not particularly exciting, you get some horns which you can't really see, and you can stick some more beacons on it, although it does already have some. The exhausts, there is a back roll and a muzzle. And that is not really a muzzle, I guess. But these don't really make a difference because it's still coming out the side of the truck, so they don't affect anything really. And the rims on these wheels only have one option. Sadly, we don't get any kind of special paint. It defaults to a military green. You can have it in some weird psychedelic colour, or you can have it in, I guess, a sort of snow camouflage, desert camouflage, water camouflage, maybe? And forest camouflage, fairly standard, and a normal range of colours, so naturally I've painted my pink. Unfortunately, you do not get the, like, hanging things in the cab, you only get bobbleheads and stickers, and you can have the x stickers and windshield stickers. So I'm just going to put on the sideboard head and the crane. Then, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be completing Ontario with this thing, because I've done pretty much everything. I've done all the tasks in both maps and I just have a couple of contracts left which is uh, this one to deliver some hay bales and this one which is to deliver some gold and so what I'm going to do is we're going to use this new truck and test its capabilities by doing these tasks. We're going to start with serious business which is to deliver eight gold from the mine up to the railway station and that shouldn't be too hard, but we need to see how high we can stack things, because stacking things is very useful, and this thing is very wide, so hopefully it should be stable enough that we can stack things like three or four high. I'm gonna be honest, it looks really weird to see a crane at the back. I'm used to seeing the other side of the bed. Oh, and before we head off, I'll just show you something else. So, you can see here we have the trunk repair supplies, which have 140 fuel, and then we have the service kit, and now, you may be thinking, I didn't see that in the customizations, and that's right, because the service kit is something that's built in. So it has a built-in 50 extra fuel on top of the 500 that it starts with. We also have 150 repair parts in the trunk repair supplies, but in the service kit we have another 300. Now as far as I'm aware, the service kit is just this little box at the back, which is something that some other trunks have, but it doesn't actually work properly. So it's nice to see that they actually made it work. And of course, we have both spare wheels. But anyway, let's go get this gold. As you can see, the top speed is not going to be breaking any records, and uh, neither is the steering. It, it doesn't turn particularly sharply. And although it does not go particularly fast in a straight line, it will um, go at that sort of speed, but just everywhere. Like in deep mud, it'll have to drop it a couple of gears. Probably just go down to auto one. But you don't really need to put it into low for deep mud. It just sort of keeps going in auto. Yeah, the only downside of its tires is they have a value of 0.3 on uh, asphalt, which is pretty bad. So it means that you don't really want to be driving on roads, like this thing is just better off roads than on roads. Yeah, we, we are not really making this corner, um, it just sort of didn't stay on the road. However, we kind of don't need to, because we want to go up here anyway. This thing is just so powerful and so wide that I am just going to drive just up here, up a river. Well, it's not even a river, it's just a sort of ditch that is quite steep. But this thing does not care, because you will not stop this thing. It does have 
quite a bit of front overhang. However, it's quite high and it has enough grip on the rest of the wheels that if you get the front beach, you can just sort of push through it with the rest of it. So anyway, we need to pick up with gold and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure that the stabilizers are going to do much because they're not much wider than the wheels. In a lot of vehicles, you put the stabilizers down and you've like doubled the width of your vehicle. But it makes barely a difference to this because it's just so wide. You know, this loading from the back seems a bit weird at first because you're not used to seeing vehicles with a crate in the back. It's actually quite nice. I'm not quite sure what it is about it. So I'll probably just take this cargo up to the railway station and then go down and grab the other lot. So let's just quickly plan a route. Look at that steering! Yes, you're going to have to get used to doing three-point turns with this thing. Ah, uh, here we have the, the front overhang doing front overhang thing. Now it did take some engine damage, but it, it doesn't seem to really care about that because it's still got a load of points of durability on the engine. Like, the engine on this thing is so strong. There we go. It did just stop me. Um, just to reconnect with that so we don't drop it. It's going to be one of those trucks that occasionally stall randomly. That's a bit annoying, but it's not a massive problem. And hey look, this is some rather deep mud here that a lot of vehicles have a bit of trouble going through and they have to really slow down. Not this thing, this thing just, you know, floors it and it's fine. In fact, it's going up through the gears in a deep bit of mud. nearly there, and if there's one thing that I've noticed from the drive over, it's that this map is really not the best for showing this off, because this map is one of the easier maps in the game, this DLC is one of the easiest regions, and it's kind of too easy for this, this has such little problem with it, it's ridiculous, I just tell you little trouble this thing has in any of the difficult bits of a map because to this they're just little bits of mud that it doesn't really care about. They've also burnt 211 litres of fuel already. It tends to be sitting at around sort of 13, 14, 15 litres per minute which is quite a lot but for a heavy truck it's not that bad actually. And considering it's got 500 litres available, fuel is really not a massive problem for this thing. As a little extra bit of challenge for this thing, we're going to be taking it down this little road down the back. There's a little sort of main road that's marked on the map that goes around here, but there's a little side road, when I say it's a side road, it's a muddy track that goes down here, through here, and along this bit, which is sort of shorter, it's also a little more exciting, and should perhaps give this thing a little bit more difficulty. Not even one of the trees you could normally knock down. This thing is just apparently so heavy and powerful that it just demolished that tree. Not many vehicles can do that. That was absolutely no problem. We clogged the engine on a few things, nothing major, and for some reason the suspension decided to explode on contact with a tiny rock. However, I can just stick some repair parts into it and it'll be fine. And now I'm going to use the wonderful rear to just ram the boxes a little and then just stop there and go back into crane mode. And I'm not even going to bother putting the anchor down because it really does not matter on this thing. Okay, so I've loaded up all five gold. We are triple stacking here. However, I think that this thing will have no problem with this. So far, it has been 
incredibly stable, although the camera view is not particularly great. Apparently the fuel tank's there? What? There. Just sort of hit this, this bit down here between the two front wheels and it damaged the fuel tank. You know what, I'm just going to repair while I'm here. The suspension is pretty weak, which is kind of annoying. Although it does make up for that by having a nearly indestructible engine. Uh, my gold is a floppy. Um, oh well, I'm sure it could be fine. We haven't got far to go. Before this was released, the Zix 605R was regarded as the king of SnowRunner. However, I think we might be in for some dethroning because this thing is a beast. Although really, it's more just the reigning champion coming back. Because this thing was the king of spin tires and mud runner. I think so far what I've seen of it, it is successfully reclaiming that throne because it is just unstoppable. And that's just drop off the rest of the gold. And there we go. And we still get 25 grand. That's not that bad, actually. And we've still got 100 litres of fuel. Wow. And now it's time for the last one. We do was getting six hay bales, so we're going to need to triple stack it properly this time. But now I just need to try all the way up to the top of the second map. And, you know, you're going to get an interior time lapse for this one because I haven't really looked at the interior. So we can do that while we drive along to Zarpin. So, as you can see, as you can really see the outside, it has this sort of split cab thing. There's sort of another cab over there on the other side of the vehicle. Uh, looking at the inside, we have a lot of dials. We also have some lag. It's not particularly exciting in here. It's just rather claustrophobic. It's quite narrow. Let's actually get up to the other map. see what we're doing and for YouTube compression sake. And now let's go and pick up these name bales and see how big they are. Look they have four attachment points. And the important question is can I fit three of them in a line, like three of them on one level? Because if I can, that means I don't have to stack them as high. I don't roll backwards, roll forward again. There you go. They fit it in nicely. Well that's good. Now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to like balance them like this, because I can't exactly put a circle directly on top of another circle. That's just going to f that's just going to roll back and forwards. So we're going to have to stack them in a little triangle. Go, so that's all the hay bales. Now we just have to drive back again. Well, we have to drive down to the town to deliver these. Now I think I mentioned it earlier, but this is a DLC. It's a standalone truck and it's only a little DLC. It's not part of the year three pass unfortunately. However, it is only £3.29. That's four dollars for you Americans. And honestly it is it is worth that. It is a very capable truck, it's very stable, it's got some unique features. If you are thinking of getting even just one vehicle DLC, I would say go for this one because this one is very good. This this is my new favourite frog. That's just that's just given. This is the, the new meta probably. What? what just happened? Someone someone please explain to me what I just witnessed. Um I was going along and I think I bounced off a tiny little tree stump or something. Probably one of those fallen trees and the game decided that I should bounce. Um, that was slightly scary. Thought I was going to lose all the hay bales down the side of the cliff. Well, not really a cliff, it's a 
Charlotte Hill. Now the town is just over here, uh, so I will get to the town story, and then I'll have to like unpack all my hay bales so that I can pack them up again, so that I can delete them. The game has also seemed to have got confused and it's not giving me the arrows anymore, but hopefully the mission will still work. Throw the hay bales on the floor. Here is the last two. I'm going to get 6,000 monies from that. That does mean that we now have Ontario 100%. 60 out of 60, 4 out of 4, 6 out of 6, 4 out of 4. Nice. And now I just have to recover all these vehicles to the carriage and all the ones that on the second map because I brought up a lot of vehicles with me. This is going to take a while, especially all these ones on the other map because I have to load both maps and keep loading between them. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. But anyway, that is going to be it for this video. So, thanks for watching. Don't get distracted. Go subscribe now. And go buy this DLC, because this thing is amazing. Goodbye.